This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And this week he's taking a look at the weapons from sci-fi shooter Atomic Heart. Well, it, we had to have an AK, and here it is, looking completely stock. The first impression is, is pretty good, but you'd hope that a game coming from Russians would have a good AK. Let us know what other games or guns you'd like to see Jonathan break down, and make sure to subscribe for more of this kind of content on the channel, including Loadout, which takes an in-depth look at the most iconic firearms in gaming. Right, let's take a look at the weapons from Atomic Heart. Makarov PM, classic of the, of the Cold War and still used today um, in, in Russia and other Eastern Euro European countries. It's not spot on for a, a Russian or Soviet made Makarov. Uh, then again, neither is this. <laughs> this is a, um, a Kyber made Makarov PM. It's actually marked on the slide uh, Tashkent, which I think is the model. It's got a spurious serial number, a spurious arsenal mark, but it's really very well made, very well finished. It has the standard Soviet type plastic wraparound grip with the star, which this game version doesn't. This has a like a thumb groove set of wooden grips. I can't think of a Makarov that had wooden grips. The gun looks a little too, or is a bit too big. It's modeled too big. I don't know if you can tell from the size of, of the gun versus my hand, but there's far too much bulk at the back, especially, but um, the slide is too tall. Another another issue is, so the real Makarov, Makarov has a heel release, as, as, the, as it's known, it's in the heel of the grip, which is really quite awkward. You have to push it to the rear to then be able to pull out the magazine. Now, the real magazines do have these long witness holes in, in the sides, and um, the magazines as depicted don't have them in necessarily the same place but that it's it's close enough the problem with that is you cannot do the um what's become known as the the john wick flick where you press the magazine release and flick out the gun and use gravity inertia whatever to to send the empty magazine away to then present the gun for the fresh one you can't do it well you could but you'd have to press the magazine release pull it part way down then flick it out which is not what we see done. Equally, they haven't redesigned it for a thumb or finger magazine release. Uh, it's not clear to me where the magazine button actually is. Magazine catch. Oh dear, I, I thought I, I was looking at gameplay where we'd switched to another weapon for, for some reason, but no, this is in fact the upgraded uh, Makarov and it has, let, let's start with the positives. <laughs> it has the traditional plastic grip wrap around. It, it even has the, the separate steel lanyard on it. So that that's, that's pretty good. Uh, the rest of it, yeah, not a fan. <laughs> we've, we've somehow replaced the whole, well, part of the frame and all of the slide and, and barrel assembly with something more like a machine pistol design. I mean, the upgrade to the Macro PM, as far as I'm concerned, is a Stetchkin, <laughs> a real gun. Uh, full auto, Makarov kind of design cues, but bigger and more powerful and, and very interesting and historical. This is kind of fish nor fowl. It has the additional upgrades that the game has as part of its economy, as it were. And, and to be fair, I guess to incorporate that, they've had to re change, they've just had to change the architecture of the gun. I'm not sure what's going on with the magazine. That's obviously extended, but also changed in design. And there's something hanging off the back where in reality, the magazine release catch lives. The, the Russian KS-23 uh, six or four gauge shotgun, depending on who, who you believe, 23 millimeter basically. Essentially it's a conventional pump action shotgun, it's just very large bore and has a distinctive look. It makes a lot of sense in this in this game for, for, for obvious reasons. What I'm looking at here has been extensively modified with some stuff, <laughs> some kind of electrical component tree. There's even a, a nail hammered into the buttstock there to as a cable router. A big slot cut in the buttstock to, to fit, I don't know what, I'm not sure what that is, but again, it looks electrical. I also don't know what the big bulky thing on the front is, so I'm gonna stop speculating and see how it performs. <laughs> it 
so I've identified, I did identify the attachment point port thing correctly, not a huge achievement, but nonetheless. And there are these uh, vials of some sort of goo of different types for, for different additional effects that you can, you can attach. I suppose I'm not subjectively, not a massive fan of building similar effects into the gun that make it more of a fantasy thing, but some people I'm sure are going to enjoy the, the combination of real technology with weird stuff. I like the idea of legacy weapons that get upgraded in some way. I like that to make some technological and mechanical sense, more so, more so than what we have here. Because by and large, this is behaving just like the gigantic pump action shotgun that, that it is. The other modification that's been done here, this is somehow turning a pump action to into a, a semi-automatic. The idea that you can attach something to an in-game weapon and it just completely changes the mechanical properties of that object. Obviously that jams in my brain slightly. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're free to over overlook it and welcome to do so, but it's always going to irk me in the back of my brain. Get in line, you sons of bitches. Change of pace now. We have an, uh, an energy weapon, and I think the comparisons with this game that have been drawn are Bioshock, of course, but also Fallout, so almost like a Soviet fallout and so far this is by far the falloutiest of weapons well well models with with realistic looking electrical wires and connections and capacitors and and stuff like that we've got somewhat conventional firearm aspects as well so a grip frame uh, what looks like a sheet metal trigger the blue tape wrapped around the grip as always annoys me because <laughs> unless the grips are badly cracked why would you do that i suspect that's an upgrade. Often grip tape of some sort is offered as, a, as an upgrade in a game, even though it would do very little. Iron sights, we've got somewhat conventional iron sights on top. Slightly weird shape. I'm not sure you'd bother to make a front sight out of convoluted bent sheet metal like that. It doesn't need to be that shape. I think that's more of a, as what I, as what I often call visual interest thing. Right, so I think I've effectively misspoke calling this directed energy, because although it, it does use electrical power, the main attack is this physical material. It, it's a, it appears to be electrically charged, so it's directing energy as a weapon, but it's not pure energy that it's, that it's projecting, if that makes sense. We've got some sort of projectile that has an electrical current. Seems pretty implausible. Never mind the, the idea of super compact energy weapons anyway. Although, there appears to be, so what, what's built into the gun, I think is a set of capacitors rather than batteries, because it seems to be, you seem to be, or maybe rechargeable batteries, because you seem to be charging this weapon from your own transhuman implants or something. There's, there's some interesting stuff going on here. I, just, I haven't fully wrapped my head around it. And then a second attack with this modified version with the, with the flaps on the front is like an EMP blast kind of thing, but EMP is just energy. It will it will burn out circuitry, blow up things like capacitors, probably. But it, this seems more physically destructive than that, if that makes sense. Well, it, we had to have an AK, and here it is, looking completely stock. I'm sure I'll see a, an upgraded version soon. The first impression is, is pretty good, but you'd hope that a game coming from Russians would have a good AK. Uh, I've got one here. This is pretty stock. AKM 1974. A little bit older than me. Something I did notice, uh, the beauty of having access to this, this amazing collection is you can just pick it up and compare it at exactly the same angle uh, and relative distance from your face as it is in the game. And when I do that, I see that the barrel and gas tube from the front of the, of the handguards is too short. In theory, that means in profile view, the whole thing would actually be a bit too short. It's probably an in-game field of view perspective foreshortening thing. Uh, the actual model is probably not wrong, but it looks wrong <laughs> when I hold it in the same way in front of my face. There's more barrel and more gas tube here than there is on the model version. Um, I don't know if it's my speakers, but this doesn't quite sound like an AK to me, and it's maybe a bit slow and chugging. Uh, I think I think the firing rate should be a little bit higher than that. 
Now, there's some weird muzzle flash going on here. This is very small, but quite long. So it looks it looks weirdly like, a, I don't know, a blowtorch or something. <laughs> it, it doesn't look like a real muzzle flash, and it doesn't sort of look like your typical video game, and certainly not your mo typical movie muzzle flash, which is greatly augmented by being basically a full charge blank that just overrides the capability of any flash suppressor to suppress that flash. I almost missed that. I was focusing on the magic hand, but um, with one hand off the gun, firing with one hand, somehow we've got the old fudge the reload thing where it's kind of just out of camera shot and magazine off, magazine on. Yeah, and probably you'd have to wrap the charging handle as well if it's empty and it's back it back up and ready to go. All without, it's like, look, Ma, no hands. It's, look, Ma, one hand. Needless to say, that's been, that's been fudged for gameplay reasons because if you just always ran out of ammo and couldn't reload. Well, I don't know. Personally, I'd rather have that and just be reliant on your magical powers until such time as you can reload the gun normally. Right, a fair bit to look at here with the upgraded AK. A replacement, top cover arrangement, where we have those now, give you a, a Picatinny rail on the, on the top. This has some additional uh, kind of electrical, magical stuff going on as, as the upgraded guns in this game do. The overall impression is a bit Elysium, the film Elysium. Vintage firearms that have been upgraded. So we have a an additional fore end here, a big chamber around the barrel, which now looks super heavy as well. The attachment port for the um, polymer material and a huge what looks like a muzzle brake but i'm guessing is supposed to be part of the upgrades not sure what it's supposed to do a form of a, a red dot reflex sight on top very vulnerable if that was to get hit by anything i, I can't imagine it wouldn't break this is why current day red dot sights are somewhat chunky because they have to be able to be protected whereas traditional iron sights just need well either to be made of a block of steel or to have some some protectors on the front something not very real world, of course. Quite a strange rear end on this thing. Um, I guess it's meant to be a butt stock, but it's shaped more like some sort of grip. Weird shape, don't really understand how it's, but well, it would work, it would work like a butt stock. I just don't know why it's not shaped more like one. But yeah, overall, it, look, it looks like what it's purporting to be. Um, armored cables underneath, uh, look pretty cool. There's, there's cast metal, there's sheet metal, pipe work, polymer, but looking quite primitive, looking quite Cold War-y. I guess that's meant to be a, a sight system on the left side. Looks more like a, an optician's bit of equipment. I will say the I like the the amount of stuff that's moving and interacting with itself <laughs> on on the gun. Uh, it's hard to do. I think it's I think it's hard to do with energy type super high tech weapons that we have no idea how they would work or even if they could work. But you still have to make it look and feel like they are working. So the little cylinders that that sort of screw in and out on it, or they, they react. That they come in to fire a shot, and so they sort of screw all the way in slowly for one big powerful shot, and then yeah. So those and the and the the way the the muzzle device works, it does feel like something that's actually firing. Okay, I think I, I think we have a well, we have an electromagnetic weapon, often called a rail gun. I think we can well, we can see this doesn't have strictly speaking rails. It has coils, so I, I guess technically it would be a coil gun. They are sort of the individual coil assemblies are shaped, so it's almost like a series of pillars or, or almost forming a barrel down the middle. I quite I like the aesthetics of this thing. Uh, the big uh, electricity substation style <laughs> component on the top there. I don't know what the big knobbed handle lever thing on the back of the uh, left side is. We'll find that out. It's got a sort of motorbike grip on the left side. Let's have a look.
Right, it seems this seems more more effective than some of the other weapons I've seen so far. A couple of hits maybe to, to take out one of these robots, and it sort of seems to sort of disintegrate them in a sort of low-key way. <laughs> they sort of gently float away on the breeze, like Thanos has has snapped them or something. This this is presented as a sort of coil gun. In reality, those things accelerate a physical projectile to very high velocities and achieve damage and penetration that way. Like a lot of sci-fi rail guns. Um, video game or otherwise, this is more of an energy weapon. So it, it's sort of charging up a blast of energy down the coils and then it shoots it out the end. So almost mistaking what um, coil and rail guns actually are, this, this is more of a directed energy weapon. So I mean, the visuals on on this on this game are great, and there's a lot of variety in the weapons. Visually speaking, we everything has that port for attaching the additional fire effects. Um, even this, which appears like it looks like it's going to be some sort of a rocket rocket launcher or, or a coilless weapon or something, it looks like we've got three barrels within this tube. I'm not sure what the big circular hoops are all about. I'm not sure how you're going to shoulder this thing. There's a sort of RPG seven style vertical grip, weird sighting system. Let's have a look. Right, so interesting. I'm gonna go with recoilless, but the, the munition itself is, well, it is a bit like the anti-personnel rounds fire from something like an RPG-7, where there's no rocket assistance to the to the target to give it a flat trajectory. So it just sort of punts off at an angle, more like a sort of shoulder-fired mortar. The munitions here, they don't look like anything that I can think of there. They look like miniature mortar bombs with fins. So an upgrade here that makes sense of the triple barrel aspect that I spotted, where we have a cluster of three munitions being loaded in one go, but then they fire individually which I think would explain why the model I was seeing had three holes at the back, but only one hole at the front. I'm not I'm quite sure how that works. And then the the, so the sighting system is, uh, is, uh, is locking on and it, the rocket is traveling really, really slowly <laughs> toward the target. Um, I, rockets travel significantly faster than that. So despite the lock on, an awful lot of these shots seem to be, they're spiraling so much. I don't know why they'd be spiraling. There's no reason for, for any kind of rocket or describe a spin like that. That's um, suboptimal, I think is the phrase. And, it, and indeed it is in the gameplay because we've got a solid lock and then the spiral takes it past the target. That must be immensely frustrating. I don't know why that's the case. It kind of looks cool, but I think if you're gonna have the visual effect of it doing it, you, you shouldn't really cheat the player by having them miss. Thanks for watching, guys. Those were the guns of the pretty brand new game, uh, Atomic Heart. I hope you'll join us over on the Royal Armouries YouTube channel as well. Um, lots of interesting videos there. Not all firearms related at this point either. Although what is firearms related is on the 11th of March, I am gonna be uh, present at a weekend event. Have a look on our, on our website, the details there under events. So again, thanks for watching, really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.